Hi and welcome to this lesson um, on the exciting topic of double and compound angles. Obviously we're working in, uh, in trigonometry and what it basically comes down to is, um, is can I write an angle as the sum of two other angles? So for example, let's say I have sine of uh, 70 degrees. Okay, Sine of 70 degrees. Is there a way of expressing this as 50 degrees and 20 degrees okay is is it possible so let's say they gave I, I know what this ratio is going to be for sine and cos and I know what this ratio is going to be for sine and cos but I don't know what that ratio is going to be okay so is there some way that I can express this obviously I can just write sine of 50 degrees plus 20 degrees just to rewrite the 70 but this is definitely not equal to the sine of 50 degrees plus the sine of um, 20 degrees. Let me give you one, one example why that's not true. Let's take for example sine of 180 degrees. Okay, Sine of 180 degrees, hopefully you've done enough of this to know that that is zero. If I look at my cast diagram, 180 degrees would be there which means the triangle in that quadrant would look like that. Opposite would be zero. It doesn't matter what adjacent is or what hypotenuse is. Zero over hypotenuse would be zero. Okay. However, I can express this as sine of 90 degrees plus 90 degrees. And if I were to write this as sine of 90 degrees plus sine of 90 degrees, what would I get? Okay. Well, this answer would be two. Because at 90 degrees, if I was, if it was possible to draw it in a 90 degree triangle, my opposite and my hypotenuse would be the same length, which means opposite over hypotenuse would give me, um, I should use y actually, my opposite y over r will give me 1. So I'll have 1 plus 1 is equal to 2. So if you do take this approach, then you are actually saying that 0 is equal to 2, okay, which is absurdity that's ridiculous we all know zero is not equal to two don't we okay so is there a way is there a way of expressing it of course there is okay of course there is and I'm going to start with cos so if I have cos of an of of a sum so cos of a plus b okay this can be expressed as cos of a times cos of b minus sine of a mm, sine of b okay and you're probably thinking how on earth do you make that leap how do you get from here to there well that's where the proof comes in okay we can go and prove this I'm not gonna do it here so you're gonna have to take my word for it just for a little while the reason why I don't want to do it yet is because the the what we need in order to understand this proof we haven't discussed that yet and, and I want to discuss that first so that you can just f have a great feel about this proof okay so l let's not look at this proof for now let's just assume this is true so just trust me I, I know you have no reason to but just trust me for now and uh, let's look at some proofs for why would cause a minus b be equal to cos of a cos of b plus sine of a sine of b if this is true why will this be true well let me show you this very cute proof okay very very cute proof okay assuming that that is true so we are allowed to use this okay so in my proof I'm not going to use the second part okay when I want to prove something that's my aim that's where I want to get to starting from here so there's a bunch of missing steps in between and I want to fill in those steps that's the idea of a proof okay so this is what I'm going to do uh, so what we have is we have cos this is what we can start with we have cos of a minus b but now a minus b is the, say, is the same as saying a plus so I want to use that so I need a plus but what am I adding I'm adding a negative b isn't that simple 
I'm just going to use that and instead of just adding B I'm adding a negative B and everywhere in this side I must just replace negative B okay so that's not too difficult so I use cos of a cos of negative B now so far we've been assuming that all of these angles are A and B um, that, that's just an assumption that we have that A A and B is less than 90 degrees uh, or equal to but they are acute angles okay plus sine of A sine of negative B okay so what do I notice this side well cos of a negative angle is just where's negative angles if I take my cost diagram cost diagram negative angles are in the fourth quadrant okay if it's 90 degrees negative negative of anything less than 90 degrees would be in the fourth quadrant where cos is positive which is great so I can just say well uh, cos of a negative angle is the same as cos of a positive of that angle positive okay it's cos is still positive in that quadrant so I don't need to multiply with a minus one in front however sine of negative B sine is not positive in this quadrant so if I want to make it sine of B I must multiply with a negative one on this side and that's why that becomes uh, plus one times negative one is negative one sine so negative sine of a sine of B isn't that just an elegant simple proof just following on from what we know well, I think it really is very very nice okay so let's look at sine sine of a plus B now our question is it, using this using that I know what cos of a plus B is what is sine of a plus B well what is the relationship between cos and sine? They are co-ratios of each other. So I know that sine of an angle is the same as cos of 90 degrees minus the angle that we have here, which means we must put it in brackets A plus B. Okay, that's the same relation. Sine of something is equal to cos of 90 minus that something. And then we go from there. Okay, so here's maybe a little bit of trick step is all you need to do now is just group this and that okay so first we multiply in the negative to get 90 degrees minus a minus b so we get 90 degrees minus a and this is our one and then a minus b minus b and we know what cos of 90 degrees minus a minus b would be okay so because this is just is just this is just two angles there's one angle and there's another angle okay and cos of a minus b is this expression just with a plus in between so this becomes cos of 90 degrees minus a cos of negative b or well, not really negative b but b okay plus no yeah plus plus sine of 90 degrees minus a sine of b okay so I've used the previous one because I've already proved it okay but you could have followed the same steps by using the first one and just following the same steps making this a negative b that a negative b and doing the same thing as before um, I'm not going to do that because I already did that so cos of 90 degrees minus a let's simplify that that is co-angles co-angles a is a uh, acute angle so 90 degrees minus a would be in the first quadrant and that means sine of a cos of b plus sine 90 degrees minus becomes cos of a sine of b isn't that beautiful okay there we have an expression for the compound this is called compound angles when we have uh, the sum of two angles inside here and that is the expression that it is equal to okay how about the negative sine of a minus b well let's not take the long way around again let's take the simple part again that is sine of a cos of minus b plus cos of a sine of minus b 
and again we know this is positive and that is negative so sine of a cos of b because negative angles is fourth quadrant cos is positive there so there's no negative that needs to be multiplied in the front however sine of negative angles fourth quadrant cos is positive sine is negative so we multiply the negative in front <sighs> okay cos of a sine of b okay and there we go they, let's just let's just summarize what we have and see if if there's just uh, some sort of conclusion we can take from it so we have cos of a plus b we saw was equal to cos of a cos of b minus sine of a sine of b okay then we had that cos of a minus b was the same expression but the two terms were subtracted so cos of a cos of b plus sine of a sine of b and then sine of a plus b was sine sorry that was sine of a cos of b plus cos of a sine of b and finally the negative one here was again the same just with a different sign so sine of a cos of b minus cos of a sine of b there we go this is the conclusion that we can make this is called the compound angle identities and um, there's really no, I, well I don't know of an easy way to remember it if anyone watching this video knows of just an easy way to remember it just post it please uh, I'm sure there's students that will appreciate it the only thing that that I use to remember is that sine has the same sign so sine has the same sign so plus plus okay minus minus sine has the same sign that's the only thing I use to remember and um, same sign different ratios while cos has different sign same ratios so here you can see cos cos okay different sign one is a plus one is a negative same ratios sine is same sign different ratios then cos is just the opposite S uh, different sign same ratio so maybe that helps well try it out okay so let's write it down sign same sign different ratios what am I spelling there? different ratios okay cause different sign different signs same ratios okay now if there's one thing that I do encourage you to know off by heart in trick it is this and the only reason why I'm really encouraging you to know this off by heart is because it's really helpful to recognize it in an expression so for example you would you would be asked to simplify something like this what is cos of 2 cos of 43 minus sine of 2 sine of 43 you'd be asked to simplify something like that and and you don't have a special angle for cos of 2 neither for cos of 43 and you're not allowed to use a calculator so what are you going to do well this one if you know this off by heart just like if you know someone's name you will know someone's face you'll recognize them in a crowd like that that's how it works you need to study this so that you can recognize <laughs> okay this is that expression Okay, which means I can add a and b inside cos. I can just have cos of 2 plus 43, and that's just cos of 45, and cos of 45 is nothing worse than just the square root 2 over 2. Okay, so that's my encouragement. Know this off by heart. Study it. Please, please do. It's going to help you, but that's it from me for now. I'll see you in some example. Well, oh no, in the next video, we're doing the double angles. Okay, I'll see you there.